Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams for vidEasy.com, and today we're going to learn how to take a still photo and make it into a 3D scene using an optical illusion called parallax. Here, have a look at what parallax is. You can see in this shot that the buildings far away seem to be moving less than the railing that's close to us, and even less than the window that's right in front of us. Our brains know instinctually that things far enough away should move less as we move laterally in relation to them. Things that are closer will move laterally more as we move. So we can use this trick to take a still photo, break it into parts, offset them in 3D, and then move a camera through them in such a way that it appears as if this is some kind of shot natural footage. So that's enough of me talking about it. Let's open up After Effects and let's get into it. Okay, before we get into After Effects, you need to take a photo or get one, or however you come across a photo, just do it. Uh, what you're looking for is a lot of clean lines, so check out the detail here. Bam, that's nice. Uh, this was taken with a very wide depth of field. That's really important for catching all this detail. Depth of field is basically how near or far within that span is going to be in focus, so you do that by dialing in the size of your iris to be uh, really small. This is a uh, f22. So once you take your photo, Bring it into After Effects, and you'll notice right away the photo is pretty flat and we can't move around and, you know, the whole thing is ruined, we should quit and go home. So the next thing to do is to cut this up into its individual 3D layers. If you're there on the day, try to remember, you know, how far away things were, maybe measure it if you're a real keener, but for our purposes, all we have to know is that this large mass here is in front of this kind of outcropping here, which is in front of this, which seems to be in front of that, and that's probably not important, but this is in front of this, and that is in front of the sky. There's a bit of a house peeking out back here, but essentially we have one, two, three, four, five, six layers, Maybe this one. Who knows? Who even cares, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use masks uh, using a little tool up here, the pen tool, to cut it all out. So first things first. Uh, take your photo, drag it down here to this uh, Make New Comp button, and now it has made a new comp that is the size of the photo, and we're good to go. So what I like to do is I make all of the masks on one layer. So... You do that by clicking on the old pen tool up here, and uh, you come out, you know, just start over here on the edge, click, boop, makes a point, and then point, 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 a whole bunch of points. Uh, if you really want to get detailed with this stuff, go nuts, uh, get as detailed as you feel like spending the time. Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to do the first one. And then we're going to skip ahead to one I've prepared earlier. Just like they do on the cooking shows. Because we are cooking up some sweet motion graphics. They are going to be tasty. So you can see that you want to just kind of capture the shape here. We're actually going to use some feathering and mask expansion to uh, go ahead and clean this up. La 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 la. Doing more. More of it. And the good thing in After Effects is if you don't like the points, click, and ah, oh, put it in the wrong spot. Ah, oh, it's no good. Hold down space bar, and look, I can move this around. Ah, oh, that's good. Ah, oh, I can relax. And move on. Running out of space, hold down space bar without selecting any points. You get a hand, click and drag, and you're moving right along. So, you know, try to make use of the tools as best you can to move this along really quickly. Click and drag again. Click, 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 hold down space, click and drag, click, 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 and we're already at the end. I use my scroll wheel to zoom in and out. All right, now we're at the edge, at this edge, at this edge, and then close it off. You can tell it's time to close it off because you get that little circle next to the cursor. So boom, close it off, and now we have isolated this particular part. Now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the masks in here, mask 1, change it from add to none. So when we're working, we're able to carve out all of these things, leave it on none, and then we'll come back when we've outlined all of the shapes that we want. So let's, uh, let's go to one that I've prepared earlier uh, for us. Here's one that already has a whole bunch of masks on it. So, you know, here is the mask in yellow that you saw me do. That was pretty great. Now, what I do to kind of smooth it out here is select Mask Path, 
go up to your pen, get this pointy arrow tool, and then with the pointy arrow tool, you can click on the point. Well, if you have them all selected, then you click on a point, and then all of them go from being jagged like this to being bezier curved smooth like this. And now the other thing we do is crack open the mask and do this to all the masks, but set the feather to two. And what this is going to do is it's going to just soften the edge a little bit and then change the expansion here to minus two. So we're going to make it, you know, 2% less accurate and then pull it in two points just so all the rough edges and maybe some mistakes you've made, not that you make mistakes, but just in case, then uh, we can kind of smooth those over. Now, we want to use all of these masks to remove and add different parts of the image so that we can carve it into all these shapes. You can see here I kind of got lazy here at the end of this one. You know, since I have this mask already to define the bottom border of this shape, I don't actually need to do too much work on the bottom part of that. So, kind of trying to save time. So, here's what we're going to do. To define this one, all we really have to do is go add. That's it. So, just add means only add what's in this shape. So, that was pretty easy. Now, let's take this. Let's uh, duplicate it. And now, turn, poke out the eye of the picture below. Really only interested in the one above here. Hit M to bring up all of the masks here. See all of the, all of the things here we want set to none. The mask we're interested in and working with is mask 2, so pull that up to the top, set it to add, so that we're adding in everything in there, and then of mask 1, set it to subtract. And now we've, say, we add the green one, right, but subtract the yellow one, so that carves that out, you know? Now let's uh, duplicate that again, poke the eye out of the original one, you know, which which mask do we want to do now? Uh, let's do uh, let's do this kind of seafoam one, right? So we put it up to the top, set it to add, so we add it in, and we want to remove this mask here. We don't care about it, and yeah, mask one, you're removing, and looks like we made a little bit of a mistake, so we'll kind of fix that up, but there you go. Now you've got this one coming in, and repeat the process until you have all of the shapes uh, put in. And uh, then we'll uh, move on to something else. So let me just do that real quick for you. Do ba ba da. Okay, and that is that. The last layer here, I've set all the masks to subtract because we're only interested in keeping the sky around. So there you go. So now we've got uh, six layers to work with to make some kind of 3D nonsense. And if we're going to make something in 3D, just select all your layers here and click the 3D switch here. You can click them all individually if you want to. That is totally your prerogative. Also, make a new camera and make this, uh, let's just do a 50 millimeter preset. That's fine. Even though, you know, let's all just realize that I shot this on a 28 prime. So just do whatever you want. It really doesn't matter at this stage because we are faking it all anyway. So, uh, you got that going on. Uh, try to match your camera's settings as best you can, but it's not, it's not a deal breaker, really. So the next thing to do is to push these things forward and backwards in 3D. So, see I've labeled one of the layers sky here. That's the sky in the background. So let's uh, call up its position and type in, you know, 10,000 or something and really just kick it way back there. Negative numbers move it forwards, Positive numbers move it backwards. And then we're also going to need to scale it up to, you know, kind of match whatever. But just remember that all of these values are going to change. And uh, it's all going to be pretty different and relative. And once we start moving, we're going to need to fix some things. So to start us off, let's just try to offset these things. So what do we have here? This thing in the front, let's leave it at zero. Uh, this next thing, let's push it back like a thousand. That's good, you know, the next thing after that is this thing. Let's push it back, I don't know, like 2,000. That's fine. Now we are assuming at this point this it's an even amount of space between all these. All right, for this rock, let's push that back like 3,000. All right, and what do we got here? We got this kind of cliff face. Let's guess that it's 5,000 back. All right, so that's pretty good. Now the next thing to do is to call up these things scale. And, uh, you know, we're going to try to scale them up a little bit to try to at least fill in the bounds of this thing. 
So, you know, just grab them and scale. Grab them and scale. You know, scale this up to, hey, what's up? There you are. And then grab this and scale it. So they all kind of fit back more or less, you know, where you got them. So the next thing we're going to want to do is move the camera. Now we could just, you know, hit C, cycle through the things here, and, you know, move ourselves a little bit left and right. We could. We could do that if you want. I find a more natural uh, type of motion is a rotating type of thing. So let's, um... Let's grab a new uh, null object. All right, let's make it 3D. Call up its position and push that back to 10,000 as well, which will put it back at the same level as the sky. And if any point you want to, you know, check from a different view, like custom view whatever here, or which is an isometric view, or like from the right or the left or something, so you can see all the layers and how they all relate to each other in three-dimensional space, you know, just use that. Let's go back to the active camera, though and uh, actually do something. So take the camera, parent it to the null object. Now call up the rotation by hitting R, and I'm gonna use the uh, Y rotation here, which does some pretty trippy stuff. But uh, with the Y rotation, uh, let's set it to two, just jar it a little bit out of place. Set a keyframe and uh, move ahead uh, to the end and set another keyframe at minus two. And uh, so this will be our our movement for the whole thing. I kind of want to, you know, squeeze these ahead a little bit just so that, uh, you know, just so we have some sitting there time and then some moving time and then some sitting there time again. And, you know, let's take those and let's keyframe just an easy ease them, whatever. That's fine, just because that's a more natural type of motion. But now the big thing about this technique is right here when you're going to need to fix stuff. So let's go in grab these things, hit S, and just kind of like scale them kind of until they fit well enough that you think, ah, you know, that'll pass, that's fine. And with each one, when you scale it up, you know, scrub ahead, scrub back, see where you're at, you know, see what's working, what's not, you know, what's breaking, see if it's, you know, coming together in a pleasing way. All right, that kind of, that fixed that one up, and we can scale this one up to fill in that little gap. How's that look? Ooh, 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 there's some gaps on this end. It's okay, maybe it'll fill in. Let's just let's just wait and see. You know, always make fine adjustments. I'm sure your adjustments are fine and dandy no matter what you're doing, but you know, always always work in degrees. Now let's scale this other one up. You know, scaling, scaling, scaling. How are we looking? Yeah, that's that's doing okay. It's coming up. Okay, uh what else needs to be fixed here a little bit? Uh, da, da, da. Scrub it ahead. Scrub it back. Do, do, do. I think the sky needs to be uh, pushed down a little bit here and then scaled up a little bit there and then maybe bring it back up. Just kind of find, find the sweet spot where you can hide all of your gross errors. And not, you know, not saying that you're gross, but your errors might be gross, so... Just be prepared. Be prepared to be disappointed sometimes. And just because it doesn't work out on the first shot, it's not your fault. And uh, just try to, you know, try to have fun with it. Try to waggle these things around a little bit. Okay, so what have we created here? We've got a thing that more or less kind of pans across, and you can see how all of the things kind of overlap and move in different and interesting ways. And you don't have to just do this with photos and... You especially don't have to take the elements and try to reconstruct the photo. Uh, the idea of this exercise is to create a 3D scene that you didn't have before to give yourself more depth and interest. You could do this with illustrations if you're making uh, motion comics, you know, that kind of thing. You could do it with, you know, footage. You could do it with anything. But the idea is... We're creating more motion with only two keyframes and offsetting a whole scene in 3D. So this is pretty much the basis for making 3D scenes and that kind of thing in After Effects. And it's very, very rudimentary, but if you can get your head around these concepts of offsetting things in 3D, scaling them up to fit, then uh, you're going to be all right. So I'm Evan Abrams. This is for videasy.com. Check them out for uh, free stock footage in uh, HD, so that's a pretty good deal, and uh, it's a great community. If you have cool stuff, upload it there so that uh, everybody can participate in that, and just, yeah, if you make some of these cool things, upload them there too, and hopefully these help you out. I'm Evan Abrams. Check out vidEasy.com, and uh, we'll have more tutorials coming at you soon.
So thanks, and uh, see you around the internet.